Boro uh, Aboye. Preparation for initiation is arguably even more important, more vital than the ceremony itself, because although the ceremony might have some magical qualities to it, and it might unlock some really magnificent opportunities in your spiritual journey, the preparation is what it conditions you from the inside out to know how to embody and amplify the waves of spiritual awakening that accompany your, your, your spiritual journey, okay? And so as you go into different realms of spirituality, uh, it's important that you recognize you've moved from one place to another. It's important that you demonstrate that recognition um, by saying certain things and doing certain things and acting in a certain way. You, you adopt a certain kind of an attitude. And this is a, a, a deeply, you know, Yoruba cultural practice that has some real profound spiritual implications. And it's bound up in something as simple as greeting. The Yoruba have a greeting for everything. They got a greeting for everything. They greet the pregnant woman a certain way. They greet the artist when he's working a certain way. They greet the priest a certain way. They greet you when you're traveling. They greet you when you've come back from traveling. They greet you while you're at work. There's a greeting for different times of the day. And the day is really broken up into all these different segments. And there's all kinds of greetings, 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 greetings. And the ability to greet people is an indicator of your your training, your acculturation, your poise, your refinement, but it also is an opportunity to be blessed. When you are in the midst in the midst of your elders and they greet you and you respond properly, they'll bless you. And then they'll they'll greet you again and you respond properly and then they'll bless you. They'll bless your children. They'll bless your wife. They'll bless your, your work. They'll bless you like, if, as long as you can stay in the conversation, they're gonna keep blessing you, keep blessing you, keep blessing you, right? And that's something that if you have the opportunity to uh, go to Yoruba land or you have to, you know, you get the chance to in, engage with Yoruba people uh, in diaspora, uh, I'm talking about Yorubas from West Africa, from Nigeria, then you're gonna see what I'm saying play out, right? It's a really natural thing. There's another part of greeting within Yoruba culture that also is about placement. It's about political and um, social uh, structure and order. So when you meet somebody and they, they you know, you, they, they, of course, go through that customary greeting about, you know, I greet you as you work, how are you, know, how are you? and then they'll bless you and bless you and bless you. Then, you know, they're going to start getting into your name. Who are you? What's your father's name? What, what, what kingdom do you come from? What segment of the kingdom do you, do your, does your, your ancestral uh, homeland? Um, what, what Agbole, what, um, what lineage, if you will, do you hail from? Okay, and, and all of those things are giving them certain kinds of historical and political information about who you are and maybe if you are related to them and you know, what your placement could be in rela relative to you know, their own position. So there's a there's a there's a uh, a social and political uh, implication to greeting as well. It's, it's gathering and exchanging information about who you are and where you fall into the society. Now that's on the social level, but the same thing happens when you start doing, for example, obi abata. Okay, when you do um, obi divination, and I'm talking about obi. I'm not talking about cowrie shells. Uh, I'm not talking about cowrie shells stuck to the uh, coconut shell. I'm not talking about, you know, raw coconut meat. I'm talking about obi abata. There's a formal way in which you perform this, this ritual that ties you into this greeting process that I was just alluding to before. For example, obi abata has five signatures. There are five different um, possibilities with basic obi divination, okay? Uh, and psychologically, we know that four 
objects are the maximum that uh, the human eye can instantly recognize and register, right? You don't have to think. You can see four things and bam, you know what it is, right? With those five signatures, it doesn't take any thought. That's the max. But once you've seen it and you've recognized it, then the next part of your formal OB training, okay? When, this is the value of OB. Your formal OB training is going gonna, is gonna to indicate for you when you see signature one, there is a gesture. There's something you're going to do with your body to demonstrate recognition of that signature. Secondly, there's going to be something that you're going to say. You're going to acknowledge that signature with word and action to demonstrate, oh, I know who you are. I recognize you. Okay. And if again, you think of it like greeting, you know, if you're, you're, your, your sweetheart calls you and, and you pick up the phone and you automatically you greet them by saying, you know, you know, hey, baby. Right. Hey, sweetheart. Whatever your term of endearment is, it lets them know, oh, OK, you know who I am. And, you know, we're on a certain level of intimacy and then we can just move on into a deeper level from there. OK, but it, it in and of itself is formalized based on your relationship. You you. Your boss calls you or your colleague or your client calls you and they greet you a certain way. You respond a certain way. Right. It's a code and it indicates where we are and what we're going to do and where we need to start. You know, this whole process of of engagement. OB is the same thing. It's training your mind to, to think along those lines. It's preparing you for uh, a, a series of greetings, what you do when you when you meet the savannah, what you do when you meet the river, what you do when you meet the ocean, what you do when you meet the, o the, the forest. It's natural to you. It makes sense that you you would bow in certain places. You bow before certain people out of respect. Right. It's 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 natural when you have been trained. OB is is, is one of the ways in which you understand that the practice is not it's not casual. It's not casual. It's very formal. And in its formality, it's introducing you to deeper and deeper and deeper opportunities to be recognized, to be positioned and to be blessed. OK, so the third level of performance evaluation to determine whether or not you're ready to be initiated is being able to properly perform OB divination. OK, um, OB divination is at the very least going to show you how to recognize, acknowledge, and uh, greet different spiritual energies when they come. Once you've done that, the idea is that now you have also made yourself available for the insight and the wisdom of that particular signature, right? So people kind of assume that just because you got the OB and you throw it on the floor or on the mat, OB just has to talk. <laughs> Because I did this, Obi, you just got to tell me the truth <laughs> just because I did that. No, <laughs> Obi is alive. That's what distinguishes it from cowrie shells and all those other things. Obi is a living spirit. It has been commanded by Olodumare to do certain things, but you've got to be able to recognize it as such. You got to talk to it in a certain way. Right. So once you have um, observed the protocol, now, Obi is in a greater position, is more apt to talk to you and give you the information that you really need. Obi is, is, is able to push away the obstacles and the, and the limitations that will prevent you from hearing the message that you're seeking. OK, so it's important that you get formally trained to perform Obi divination so that you can do what you need to do to get what you really are coming for. And then once you have really received that message, you've listened to what the true message of OB is. OB has opened up the door to wisdom to you. The next thing is being able to perform the proper offerings to guarantee that whatever problems that are on the horizon are mitigated and whatever opportunities that are that are potentially coming to you won't come, you know, delay. They won't get they won't get derailed. They won't get sidetracked. They'll come directly to you and they'll come ready to fulfill whatever need that you that you have at the time. All right. And so all of these are things. These are these are basic. These are basic, basic, basic. And it's important that you get that going into your practice because OB divination is a part of what you do forever and ever and ever and ever. Once you've got a shrine, 
you are an OB diviner. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it that way because uh, there's levels of OB. But you are at the very basic level an OB diviner and you've got to be able to carry out this practice for the rest of your days. All right. So the third level performance evaluation or criteria for um, Orisha devotion to let you know, are you ready to actually keep a shrine? Third level performance indicator is OB divination. Can you perform OB divination properly? OK, so again, this is part of what I teach in the School of Orisha Studies. This is the approach that I take to my instruction. Everything that I do is done in this way. And um, I want to invite you to to, you know, come and get it properly. If you really want to learn, you really want to develop, you really want to understand what to do and why you do it. Then you check out the School of Orisha Studies and you know, you start taking your practice to the next level. Ah, boy, 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 yeah. Ah, boy, she, she.